And uh, now, before we do anything else, we have to do what they call motor tuning. Uh, here's, a, here's another little... Some guys, even me, when I started first doing this, and I'm no expert at it, okay? I've only done a couple machines before this one. And uh, the router and my CNC laser are pretty much the same. La a laser and a, and a CNC router pretty much work the same, by the way. Um, in terms of uh, motor drives and that kind of thing. Um, this might, well, I'll try not to make it confusing. The one thing we have to do is tune the motors. We call motor tuning, okay? Okay, I apologize for that. My uh, camera inadvertently shut off for whatever reason. Um, so I'm going to try to pick up from where I was. I think we were talking about motor tuning and um, I think I was talking about my laser machine, my laser machine and my router. Uh, you know, I've only set up two other machines, so I'm no uh, big expert on this either, but uh, with uh, a little exposure and a little common sense, I've picked up some, you know, some, uh, how would you say, it? Uh, I've, I've developed some perspective as to how to, quote, tune these motors. And tuning is nothing more than... Um, Selecting a speed and an acceleration, uh, um, yes, acceleration, acceleration and velocity. Acceleration is how fast the motor ramps up to speed, and then of course, velocity is the actual speed of the surface as it moves. And they um, interact, okay? So if you have uh, a speed that's um, on the high side, and for, for something like this, by the way, um, how, how do I say this? My, I'll give you a little comparison here. The, my laser assembly, uh, the head and the X and Y axis, the head that's being moved around is light in weight. It has no mass. And the motors can rapidly accelerate and decelerate. Uh, that's not a problem with my laser assembly. And they're only uh, NEMA 17 motors. So I've got them up in speed pretty high. I forget what the numbers are. I'll, I'll put a uh, comment in, in here to, uh, to show you uh, what the speed of the um, laser is. But one has to have a little bit of common sense about this. Uh, to start with, uh, for instance, you can't expect in the x-axis or the y-axis, you can't expect speeds like uh, 6 second or, or 6 inches per second or 10 inches per second. That's just unrealistic. If you think about it, uh, in one second you would want the table to move 10 inches. Now, a lot of guys obsess over this, uh, you know, uh, tuning the motors to get the maximum speed and all that. Um, don't do it. In my opinion, you don't need to do it. Use a sensible speed. Uh, and don't forget, when you're adjusting these uh, motors, uh, when you're tuning these motors, they're under no load. The only load they have is the work surface itself. And even though on a Harbor Freight mill, you know, the surfaces are heavy, the, uh, you know, the uh, cross slide and the uh, uh, tabletop there uh, are pretty heavy, and, and the head in the z-axis is really heavy, okay? So there is a lot of mass to move, and so what we need to do is choose what we think will be a reasonable speed, and I chose, um, I chose 120 inches per minute which works out to be uh, two inches per second. And even that, I think, is way too fast. But that's what I chose. Uh, in order to get the uh, motors to drive at that level, I had to play with the acceleration because the motor needs time to start up to move all that mass. And so you can't have it accelerating super fast. And so I think I set the Excel. Well, let, let's open the window here where, where we make these adjustments to start with. 
uh, we're going to go to Config tab, Motor Tuning, and we're going to look at the x-axis first. And we're going to select x-axis up here. And this thing, by the way, has some sliders here, which I never use, okay? The sliders are the same, uh, uh, adjust the parameters in these two boxes, the velocity, which is the speed, and the acceleration, okay? And, uh, you know, it gives you, uh, th this window here gives you a visual representation of um, the acceleration versus the speed, but... Uh, I find it easier just to type in the numbers. Okay, so what I did was uh, in inches uh, per minute, I chose 120 inches per minute, which I thought was uh, uh, calculating, uh, you know, just dividing it by 60. Uh, turns out to be two, uh, two inches per second, which is blazingly fast if you're cutting metal, okay? Now, I found empirically I could go even higher. I could go to 180, which is three inches per second. But again, perspective. You have to understand right now, uh, the table's unloaded, there isn't a workpiece there, and you're not pushing, you're not pushing the work surface through a, 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 a milling uh, bit. You know, uh, th there's no load on the table, so you might achieve three inches per second, um, and your friends will be all impressed by that, but uh, it, it, it may not, uh, you know, in reality, it may make things harder for you to, uh, to work. I mean, you'll have to decrease the feed rate anyway. It'll be blazingly fast, too fast to cut anything. So I'm gonna stick with 120. I've even toyed with the idea of 60. Um, uh, as a velocity. 60 would be one inch per second. And one inch per second, okay, if you're cutting metal and, and you're milling metal, uh, a block of metal, I can't imagine you wanting to, uh, you know, uh, machine through it uh, at, a, at a rate more than or greater than uh, uh, one inch per second. Uh, I'm going to show you what this is two inches per second, okay? And I chose, and here, here's the deal, again, perspective, okay? Because I chose a blazingly fast uh, table speed, you know, two inches per second is pretty fast. I had to compromise on the acceleration. I have to give the stepper motors plenty of time uh, when they get turned on, plenty of time to accelerate up to speed. And so I got the acceleration down to 50. Well, let's use round numbers, okay? We'll make it 60. 60. Uh, 60 inches per minute. Or actually, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's 60 inches, okay? And, and that's going to be, uh, again, one inch per second. So it's going to accelerate over one inch in one second. Uh, so let's just save the axis settings, okay? And click OK. And I'm going to hit the reset button here, and I'm going to show you how, how fast this thing moves. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know it already, the arrow keys here move the axis, the Y is the up arrow, uh, Y is up and down arrow keys. Uh, the up arrow key moves the table forward, back, left, right. And the page up, page down controls the Z axis on the keyboard. So let's see what this thing looks like. Plenty fast. Now that's two inches per second. Let me uh, double check, make sure. Sometimes I forget to save the settings and uh, let's see, motor tuning. Yeah, okay. So that's a, uh, that's two inches per second and an inch 
uh, one second velocity or acceleration takes a second to uh, accelerate over one inch. Um, so having said that, let me show you what's going to happen if you, you plug a number in there that's too high and the motor can't put up with it. A lot of guys, and I, I saw one guy on, online already, um, misdiagnosed this as a uh, binding problem, but it, well, I, I knew as soon as I saw it and listened to the motors in his video that it wasn't a binding problem at all. It was that he had tuned the motors to uh, what was really uh, essentially unrealistic numbers. So I'm going to, this is 120. I know it works at 180. Let's go up to around like, uh, let's see, 270. Two, 270. Uh, let's see, 180. Uh, 240, I'm sorry, 240. I'm trying to keep it in even multiples. This would be 4 inches per second. 240. Okay? And I'm not going to change the acceleration right now. It it, it might even work. I, I don't know. But I'm I'm thinking that it probably won't be able to work with these numbers in here. I just want you to hear the motor, what, what it's going to sound like. All right. Let me, uh, before I... Before I put the camera on it, let me see if it does work. No, it doesn't. Okay. So I want you to see what the motor looks like. Now, like I said, the one guy I was watching his video, hey, we're not all experts. I'm not knocking the guy. He probably eventually found out what was wrong. But um, in his video, he was declaring this as binding, and it wasn't binding. This is what it looks like. See it? It won't even, it won't even move the axis. It just... Sounds terrible. Okay, now he thought that was binding, but in reality, he just had the uh, uh, motors set up wrong. So, like I said, keep your expectations in the realm of reality. So, even two inches um, per second uh, is, you know, it's it's a speed that you will probably never need on a mill, but, uh, okay. So let's put this, see what was 240. Let's put it back to 120. Seems to work fine there. It, it even works at 180, but um, not to muddy the water too much here. It works at 180 unloaded. Remember, there's nothing on this table. I'm not cutting anything. As soon as you put something on the table, the motor sees uh, not just the load of the weight of the table and the mass, but it also sees whatever you're cutting through. So that's an additional load on what you've got there now. So it could be making that uh, silly noise uh, again when, once you try to cut a piece of metal. Okay, so anyway, th that's pretty much how I selected this number. And if you're doing a Harbor Freight mill, and, you know, uh, you just put a fusion kit in. Uh, you could probably plug my numbers directly in. Uh, I can't imagine you're going to come up with anything different, okay? Now, the steps per, I got set to 1,000. And, and once again, I'm going to say that, you know, I, I've already calculated this out, and uh, I know it's a, it's 1,000. But what I want to show you is how I derived that. Now, this... There's two ways of coming up with that number. You can actually calculate it out if you know uh, um, uh, what the ball screws are, and, and uh, um, it's uh, what 1.8 degrees per revolution. 1.8 degrees. Uh, well, I forget. Anyway, you, you can you can calculate it out if, if you've got all that information. You got the the ball screw and how, how much distance it travels over an inch and uh, what uh, uh, 1.8 degrees per step. Uh, with that information, you can figure it out, trust me. Uh, Mach 3 will do it for you, however. Thank God. So I'm going to click this. Well, first off, I know 1,000 is the right number. The steps per, by the way, relate to 
how many steps it's going to take to move 120 inches. Now this table doesn't go 120 inches, obviously, but um, those are the number of steps it would take to move over that distance. And so when we test this thing and we command it to go to one inch, okay, um, of course it should go and move one inch. And if it doesn't, then we've got these steps set up wrong. Again, if you're setting a machine up like I did my laser and my router over there with no, you know, I didn't watch any videos because nobody else did that, those except me. Uh, so uh, I had to put an arbitrary number in here and start from somewhere. Um, so if I were doing that, I happen to know it's a thousand, but if I were doing that right now, let's say I put uh, 500 in there instead of a thousand, okay, and I save it. And now remember the steps per relate to how far the table is going to move over a given distance when commanded to go an inch, it should move an inch. If it doesn't move an inch, then the steps per are wrong, okay? So I'm going to click OK here. Now, Mach 3 will calculate that for you, if I can remember where it is. It's in Settings, Settings tab here, okay? And um, this button right here says Set Steps Per Unit. Click on that. And it comes up with a dialog box that says pick axis to calibrate. We're going to do the X because I, I just changed the number in the X. Uh, and click OK. And then it's going to ask how far would you like uh, to move the axis? Well, I'm going to tell it one inch. Um, one inch. And uh, I'm doing stuff out of view of the camera here, but I want to, I got to show you, okay, let's see, all right, I'm, I'm going to tell it to move one inch, and you can do this with a scale like this. I still had the pointer on here and the scale is still on here, okay. Uh, some guys use a dial indicator. I've even held the scale up above um, the surface I want to move and make the measurement, elevated it above, whatever. Find a way to measure it. I've got the scale here and it's set on two inches there. Everything is relative. So if I command it to go one inch, it should go to three, okay. From two inches to three inches is one inch. Um, so let's see how far it goes. Okay, it went, uh, by the way, it moved in a direction opposite that I thought it was, but it doesn't matter. It moved a half inch, okay? I told it to go an inch, it moved only a half inch. And that immediately, with experience, tells me that the steps per is set up wrong. And so we're going to go back to this, okay? And a new dialog box came, uh, came up, and uh, it's a question. How far did the x-axis move, the measured value? Well, I'm going to tell a half inch. It only went a half inch. I asked go to an inch, and it went a half inch. And I'm going to click OK. And another dialog comes up, and it says the x-axis will be set to 1,000 steps per unit. Would you like to accept it? Now, see, that's the original number I had loaded in there, remember? Now, when I click yes on this, it will automatically populate that number in the motor tuning dialog. It will automatically plug it in for me. X has been set OK. All right. And if uh, we go back over here to config and motor tuning, and we can see that it changed it to 1,000. Went from 500 to 1,000. Uh, so the other axes are done the same way, except this axis I have set for 60, which is the Y axis. I'm going to change that to uh, 120, like the other axis. And the acceleration is too high here. 
uh, had it set to 60 on the other one, on the uh, X. So this is the Y, I'm going to save it. Okay, click OK. And uh, we don't need to do this for the Y again. Um, so, well, I guess to command it we do. So we'll do it one more time here. Steps per, Y axis. Um, okay, how far do you want it to go? One. Of course, the number you put in here, by the way, can't be outside the range of the table. Okay, so if the Y axis travel is only four inches, you can't tell it to go ten inches because it'll hit a stop. And uh, what I'm going to do is, since it, these are just rough, um, numbers here. I'm just going to use my scale here. When I hit enter it should go one inch. I can see my scale here. The lighting's pretty bad. And I gotta hit a reset. Ah. Sorry about that guys. Hold on a second. I did something wrong in the dialogue there. Okay, sorry about that. I had a dialog box opened up under the window that I didn't see, and that's why it wasn't moving. So let's get back to this. Uh, what was I doing now? I was going to calculate the steps per the Y. Uh, look at me, I'm all discombobulated now in settings and steps per and the Y axis and OK and I'm going to tell it to go one inch okay and I'm going to just use a, use a ruler here but you saw me do the X so I'm sure you get the gist of it uh, ordinarily I have this hard mounted someplace you know but uh, purposes of the video here I'm just going to show you Okay, one one inch. And they're asking me how far it went. <coughs> I'm going to tell it one inch. One inch. It should be st set to a thousand steps per unit. Would you like to accept? Yes. And Y has been set. Now, um, I haven't set up the uh, z-axis yet. I have no idea what the steps per are going to be for the y-axis. And I don't know um, you know what the distance, how far it moves right now. I, I do know I got the steps per set to half of what I had the other one set to. I got it set to 500. Uh, just I uh, just did that arbitrarily to get the uh, axis to move. I'll do that off camera because you saw me do the X and the Y, and it's going to be the same for the Z. Uh, so. That's about it with the motor tuning, I think. And, um, well, that's it for the motor tuning. We're going to move on uh, next. After I'll do the Z off, um, off camera. Uh, next thing we're going to move on to is the um, uh, setting up the table limits, soft limits on a table. That'll be under config and homing limits and uh, we're going to set up these parameters here for the table and I'm going to show you how to measure it how to measure uh, the the table uh, dimensions uh, let me get out of this and we'll close this off for now.